I recently found and purchased a Fram oil filter from 1998 or 1999. I immediately recognized the number as a common one, so I knew I could get a contemporary version with the same number, which is what you see here. Let's take a look at what has changed with this product over 25 years. So here's the two Fram filters. At first glance, very similar. There are some slight differences. Orange is a slightly different hue. This one's darker. The printing is in line with the filter instead of sideways. Slightly different situation on the paint here. Speaking of paint, whatever this coating is here, the extra grip black part, it used to look like they taped it off. I'm sure they didn't tape off every single one of these to paint that straight line there, but the new ones kind of look like there's something just covering it as it rotates around because there's a little bit of overspray underneath it. Or is this one super sharp? So honestly, this one has a bunch of little speckles on it. They don't have much texture to it like this. Yeah, the speckles on this, you can feel them. We can ignore the rust on this one because who knows what conditions this was sitting around in for the past 25 years. Honestly, given the time frame, it looks like it's in pretty good shape. I can see there's a very different core on the inside. I'll get to that when we get to the, uh, when we actually take them apart. The crimping to help keep the gasket in there is almost the same. It's five spots. There's eight holes. On these filters, the gasket is kind of inwards. I think there's a version where the gasket is like right up to the edge for a different application. I don't remember. I just know there was more than one filter that was this size, like this, like almost like square, not like the literal shape of the square, but like about the same diameter as height. See, this has Allied Signal branding on it. That was the company that owned them at the time that was made. And this one just says Fram Group Operations LLC. That is, a, I'm, I'm pretty sure Fram is owned by First Brands Incorporated. I don't know if Fram Group Operations LLC is. Maybe there's something going on there. But um, it's just interesting to not see First Brands on there. So let's open up this old one first. If you saw my previous video where I opened up an oil filter, which was the very first time I ever did that, I uh, tried a different kind of tool and it did not work well for me. So I went and got a more specific tool to do the job. I'm curious about something. Whoa, okay. There we go. All right, honestly, I was expecting, or like half expecting there to be a bunch of dead stuff in here. Just crawled up in there, found a way in, and then didn't find a way out, but pretty clean. Might be galvanized, but like, it doesn't have that like rough galvanized look. That's pretty hefty. Most of the weight in the oil filter is this base plate. This is kind of soft. I'll measure that in a bit. The anti-drain back valve is tight in there. It's almost, is that glued? No, I think it just had like some manufacturing oils on it and it just bonded itself to the, um, whatever this material is. It almost looks like gasket material. This is jokingly referred to as cardboard. I get it. It's very close to cardboard, but um, I don't think cardboard would withstand being in set. Like, so like when you watch a video of one of these being taken apart, unless it's got some real high mileage packed onto just the one filter, the uh, end caps tend to be all right. If you change the oil on the oil change interval that both the manufacturer and the oil filter manufacturer uh, recommend, the material here does not have a chance to degrade. It's interesting with the rust pattern on these two things, you can actually line it up exactly where it used to sit for 25 years. The shaping on this is a little off, like the hole here. It's thick on this side, thin on this side. I don't think that would affect performance of the filter much though. So there's that filter. Let's look at the new one and then I'll take them both out and we'll compare them side by side. Just a tip for anyone that wants to do this yourself. If you get this kind of tool, doesn't have to be a particular brand. If it's this design where you tighten the cutting wheel using this, 
This is not a handle. You want to hold on to this. It's not a great ergonomic grip by any stretch of the imagination, but... There we go. Is this the new one? Jeez. It's interesting that this stuck to the base plate instead of this. Same idea. Misses most of the weight. It looks really close. Like, there's definitely some differences here. This is definitely different, too. The push down on this, it's definitely better. It doesn't feel like it's gonna jam itself in sideways. Whereas the other one kind of did. So there's ribbing on the inside here, which helps strengthen the tube, especially against crushing forces, which is what you're gonna be experiencing as oil tries to get through the filter and the filter is gonna resist it a bit. This is about the same size. I'll get the micrometer out and check it. 7.04 ounces, and that's including the gasket, 6.81. They've gotten a little heavier. I don't think, given the thickness of this material, that there's uh, much difference. If I get the height different on the cut, it looks like it's about the same height on the cut. But that can affect what weight you see here. 2.43, and its measurement... 0.4 millimeters. I need to get a better caliper. I have one somewhere, I just can't find it. 2.56, 0.6. It's tricky to get an accurate measurement doing this because the cutting wheel pushes a lip inward and you need, really need to bend that back to uh, prevent it from making it seem like it's wider than it is. So there's the date code on this old one, C91332. A41992. Lots of people do a weight thing on this and it makes sense. You're comparing two. The tricky thing about this is, is there more metal on one of these when you weigh it? Or is there more of that black paint grippy stuff on there? Because when you hold it, you could feel that the, the grippy stuff is considerable in its weight. All right, these filters. The new one is 1.6, old one 1.78, so a little more weight to it, but that could be any number of factors. It could be the filter element itself, it could be any piece, it could be more glue in there. Or it could even be that there's less holes in the metal tube in there, and that metal tube could be thicker, adding to the weight. I don't know if you need to know the weight of these things, that's lighter. And then this spring, I really don't think the weight matters on these at all. 3.9 versus 3.9, which is interesting because they're very different shapes. Curious. Yeah, this sits in here and kind of just flops around. Whereas this one... doesn't have a whole lot of room for it to just slop over into the wrong spot. And again, this slides real nice, whereas this old one could be an age thing, but you can almost hear the crunch on some of these pushes. Oh, interesting. So the metal on this Okay, so first, this is the basic one. The metal that this slides against, it comes up in this dome, and then it comes straight down. So there's, like, material that this will rub up against. This one, on the other hand, you got the dome, and instead of coming straight down, it goes inward just a little bit. So only the very edge is your friction point. Another thing I noticed between these two is that the seal is, where is it? 
It's just glued on this one, the new one, and it's crimped together with a piece of metal on the older one. On the old one, the metal tube has fewer holes in it. The holes are bigger, slightly. There's also a different way that the edges are connected. It is kind of just folded in on itself like that. I'll take the gaskets out and compare them. I don't think it's really worth comparing them because this thing's 25 years old. I'm not sure what these markings mean. Obviously things can change between, things can change over 25 years, but I imagine that whoever manufactures these rings, um, either they manufacture or someone manufactures a big, like a long rubber tube and the marking on the side, it goes all the way along the rubber tube and that mark means something like it's the inside and outside diameter. Now, which one do I personally like more? With most features, I prefer the new one. I like the way that this comes together and actually like keeps it steady in the center instead of it could be like kind of off to the side. I don't know if that ever actually happens, but I feel like this actually fitting in the base like more tightly is a good thing. However, these little bend marks when it's squashed into here, that gives some, not all, but some of these filters an opportunity for oil to leak past that and not get filtered. I mean, in a real world, even if that does happen, I imagine debris will get stuck in there and eventually seal itself off, but ideally you wouldn't want that happening in the first place. I also prefer the bypass valve on this because it doesn't have that sticking thing. Like, because the way pressure works, it's going to be pushing down on all sides of this evenly. It's not going to be like pushing over to the side like I have to to get it to be all gritty sounding. But the way springs are, they end at a certain point and can exert a little more pressure to one side. So when it's coming back, it may push to the side a little bit and that could jam it open just a little bit. So let me clarify. In an ideal situation, bypass valves never need to be used. When the oil pump in your engine is pushing oil through, it has to push oil through this filter. And then after the filter, it goes to all the components inside your engine, which has, they all have varying restriction levels. And there's gonna be a difference in pressure between before the filter and after the filter. And more specifically, outside the filter paper versus inside the filter paper. And that differential of pressure, so like if your bypass valve is rated at, let's say 10 PSI, that's maybe not what this one's rated at, but 10 PSI isn't gonna be like, oh, there's 10 pounds per square inch of pressure of oil pressure, that's gonna make this open up. That's not what happens. There has to be a 10 pound difference between the outside and the inside. If you built a car that had like an oil pressure sensor before and after the filter, you could actually see that in action. So if you build up 20 PSI of oil pressure and then there's 15 PSI of oil pressure after the filter, that means there's a five PSI difference between the two. There could be something I'm not factoring in that makes that not quite true, but you get where I'm coming from. Same with the filter. I like most of what is going on here. I prefer the way that this seals up against the fiber material here. These wrinkles are not ideal. They could be worse, but also I'd like to see that crimping not be that way. It looks like part of what's making that happen is the this design. You can see the full circle, like that edge, that edge of the circle goes all the way around on here, whereas on this one, it's cut off. So the circle shape doesn't have its full structure to strengthen that area. So if this is like stamped metal, it's more prone to getting ridged in there. Whereas this one seems like the ridging happens out of the way where it's not going to affect the seal. This, I don't know what this is, and maybe it was like, the sheet was laying on the floor, like they have a bunch of sheets stacked up and this one was on the floor. But the way that it's on here, it looks like this happened as it was a filter because like it's not on the center. It's only on the edge where it seems like this may have been sitting on the ground. It's weird. Like this one's obviously doesn't have that issue at all. 
I don't know what happened here. I'm not really sure why they used this octagon shape. It looks like they used the same mold over all these years. I don't know what the idea is behind, like, it seems like the oil just push on this anyway, so maybe it's not that big of a deal, but like, why include all that material? Maybe it helps with assembly. You can see in this where this would slide around in there just a little bit as it's being transported. And so there's four marks in there. Before I go, I'll just weigh the overall filter. 11.69 grams, nice. 11.68, man, that is close. I mean, we saw that there were different parts in here that weighed different amounts, so like, interesting close number there. Now, Car Simplified is not gonna turn into Oil Filter Simplified, but I do have a few more oil filter videos in the works, so if you're interested in that, make sure you're subscribed so that when those videos come out, you'll most likely see it. I'd recommend turning on that bell notification so it'll actually show up. I have some more orange Fram filters that I'm going to take apart. This was kind of a practice video. I'm going to be taking apart a lot of oil filters. I mean, a lot. So stay tuned for that. If you have any questions, I'll keep this on hand so that I can reference it for a bit. But um, I don't know how long I'm gonna keep it on hand. These are pretty big and they're gonna take up a lot of space. Either way, Thanks for watching this one and I hope to see you in the next Car Simplified video.